First up today, we have Cauldron Energy Limited, ASX code CXU. Um, Cauldron has a market cap of around 9 million. Cauldron Energy is a mineral exploration and resources development company focused on minerals supporting the clean energy transition. A warm welcome to Cauldron CEO, Jonathan Fisher. Jonathan, take it away. Thanks for having me. Good to be back uh, several times now. I've done, uh, done the Share Cafe. I always enjoy it. Um, look, if we could just uh, go over to the first slide. Are we on this first slide at the moment? Can't see it. There we go. Perfect. Um, look, just on, on this slide, I'd like to just remind people, uh, Cauldron's been around a long time, but we are a turnaround um, story. So if you haven't seen us in the last sort of six months, I'd recommend you go back and have another look at what we're doing, a new strategy, new assets, new team, a new branding, new everything else. Um, and if you can see down there at the bottom, you can follow us on LinkedIn uh, and uh, tw uh, not Twitter, what's it called now, X, um, where we keep uh, in investors up to date. So I recommend you uh, follow us there. Uh, next slide, please. So the new team is Ian Mulholland, Chairman. I want to point out, Ian is one of the few people who's won Explorer of the Year twice. Hardcore geo, hardcore explorer, extremely uh, competent. And uh, his, his Padawan is Angelo Sokio, our uh, exploration manager. Um, Angelo's last ex uh, discovery was in lithium. Uh, myself as the, the, the CEO and Mike Fry make up our corporate team. And that gives us a huge uh, capacity to, to, to crank through new deal flow. And one of the things we are looking at is, is, is sorting out another asset. The other thing on this slide to note is over the last week, we've had a massive increase in our traded volume. In fact, we got a speeding ticket from the ASX on Monday. Um, that was particularly frustrating at 30 million shares traded. They, they, they locked us down. Um, I then responded. I wrote a 13-page treatise on why our volume was high. You know, what was so good? What's going on in the uranium markets? Why are people so excited um, about our, our EM survey results? Um, and then ASX came back and said, oh, geez, you can't write that. You can't, you know, you can't respond to our question. Um, so I'm actually really pleased. We had to put out something very benign, and I'm, but I'm pleased here to get the opportunity to talk to you today, actually to run you through some of the excitement and why I think we've seen a huge amount of volume in the stock, and there's been a bit of a share price movement too. Next slide. So current portfolio news is we got rid of the uh, Blackwood Gold project uh, over on the right there. A uh, small sale brings in a bit of cash, allows us to deploy it in the uh, focused areas. Uh, Melrose project in the West Yulgarn, uh, we've just blown an EM survey on that, got some results pending, we'll talk about that. And then Yanri, which is our um, uranium exposure, really interesting because we have the cheapest uranium uh, pounds in the ground uh, in a dual resource basically globally. Um, and with the uptick in uranium sentiment, um, investors are starting to have a look at that and realising that you know, the uranium um, super cycle is going to go on for a while, it's going to go on for a lot longer than the Labor government and WA. And therefore, um, you know, they're thinking that we're a pretty good bet. Um, we're also still looking at uh, options to, uh, to realise some value from the silica assets. Next slide, please. Okay, new strategy. In each of these four pillars, look, we're achieving things. We're selling assets, getting money to deploy across the other ones. Uh, we, we're doing some work on Yanri. I'll explain that. Um, we're looking for more uranium, in fact. And we bought our uh, first asset in nickel, which was Melrose. And I think that's what we're going to go on to next slide, please. One more. Okay, so, so guys, Melrose is, is, is fantastically located. It's only a few hours drive from Perth up the Great Northern. So it's very easy from a logistics perspective. There's accommodation and, and industrial facilities there. It is in the West Yulgarn. We are chasing Julemar style uh, mineralization. And what I'd say to any chalice investors uh, looking there, you know, three years ago, um, when before Chalice discovered Jewel and Marble, we're kind of in the same boat now. So Chalice may have had a tough time at, after the release of the scoping study, but recommend you come over and have a look at what we're doing. We are, uh, we're following the same playbook, um, starting with Aeromag EM and some drilling um, as to what uh, Chalice undertook. And uh, we're really excited by the results we've got so far. So next slide. Um, look, this is just a, 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 a photo of an old gold pit that sits in the middle of a tenement. It's actually excluded from our, our tenement. Uh, we think gold mineralization does cross into our tenements, but we're not focusing on that. But that just shows you that, look, it is, it is nice agricultural land out there, but you can mine. Um, and Independence did a hell of a lot of drilling out in this area. 
um, which we've, you know, we've, we've got the benefit of getting all that data. Next slide. Out of that data, we've identified four priority targets. Next slide. Okay, and, and these, are the, these are two of them. So what we started off with was two-dimensional AeroMag data. We were able to reinterpret that into 3D data, and two of these 3D shapes are, are shown here. The importance about that is basically these shapes are around 100 metres below surface. Now, why that's important is because we've got shallow historic drill holes that only go down to 50 metres. So for the first time, we were able to say that the, the drill hole results did not get into the anomaly, yet they were still grading 0.4% nickel. So if anyone knows anything about nickel, it's not particularly mobile. So if we've got 0.47% nickel straight above an anomaly, which we think, subject to our EM survey results, I'll get to on the next slide, that we think could be nickel sulfides. It's actually really, really exciting. And, and from an exploration perspective, it's a fantastic way um, to target our drilling. Uh, next slide. Uh, so we flew our EM survey a couple of weeks ago. Um, you can see the lines there in the map on the right. Um, and the, and the, his, the final data is to be delivered in the next few weeks. But I do want to just make this very point, and I'm not sure if anyone understands how EM surveys work. Uh, it's all electronic, obviously. It's on a chopper. We'll see some photos next. But you get preliminary data um, basically the night that, that, that you fly, the night after you fly. So you can actually look at preliminary data and you can adjust your plan for the next day. So what we were able to do is look at preliminary data and go, ha, huh, well, that's interesting. And we actually decided to get them to fly some extra lines, number one, and number two, fly some infill lines. So, you know, you'd think that you'd only do that if there was something that looked pretty interesting. Um, now, we can't say anything more conclusive. We're not allowed to release the preliminary data. But the fact that we were pretty happy doing some extra lines and some infill lines to give some expectation that we're pretty excited about what's there. Uh, next and, and by the way, we're not standing still. We're planning to drill, and we're planning to drill in November. So again, some indication that we're pretty excited about what's there and what's coming. Next slide. Um, here, here's the rig. Um, you can see the, the EM on the right there taking off. That's a 34-metre diameter rig. It's the biggest one you can get on a chopper. Uh, squirrel single engine there. Look, went off without a hitch. The guys at Geotech Airborne were fantastic. Um, and, you know, just very pleased with the work they've done. Next slide. Um, also took the opportunity to go out into the community. Really important in that area. It's all um, green, hold, green tidal, freehold tidal with the farmers. So if you don't like, if the farmers don't like you, you're not getting on their land. That's different to pastoral lease. And the guy down in the in the bottom right there is, is Paul Sutherland. That's it. Basically his land that we did a couple of those targets over. Um, and, uh, you know, beautiful part of the world, very supportive local community. Um, and in the, in the bottom left there, there's the CEO of the Shire as well. So the Shire themselves, just very happy to have us uh, in, 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 the, in the town and spending some money. Next slide. All right, uranium. Here we go. Right. Next slide. So, um, look, I live the uranium market every day, uh, so investors may not understand this, but uranium is in an absolute bull market at the moment. It is incredible uh, what you're seeing at the moment. Um, a couple of things happened in the last week, and I think this has been a major driver of, of, of our, uh, our volume. Um, spot's gone higher. It's gone 60, 360, heading towards 65. Um, Sprot, which is a physical holder of uranium, um, is heading back to net asset value and then to a premium. They're looking like they may well start printing and therefore buying physical uranium. That takes more physical out of the spot market and, and makes it harder for utilities uh, to get more physical, hence driving the price. Um, Cameco, which is one of the world's largest producers, came out just before trading on Monday and informed the market that they were short. So their production is short 2.7 million pounds uh, for this year. And not only that, because of the way the contracts work, they were actually going to have to buy in the spot market to cover their the delivery contracts. So that kind of put a bit of a rocket uh, through the uranium sector and really highlights, um, you know, the demand side. Um, WNA is going on in London at the moment. That's the World Nuclear Association annual conference. There's a lot of talk there about the supply side um, response being weak. So pricing hasn't yet got to what you call incentive uh, pricing to drive a significant amount of new, a new supply into the market. And that's causing a lot of, a lot of concern for people. There's a couple of quotes here from uh, some uh, um, 
uranium industry uh, legend saying, look, the conditions in uranium have never been better, number one, and number two, they are not changing anytime soon. Um, obviously, Russia uh, and, and Nigeria and other sort of geopolitical concerns means that people that can produce in really friendly countries like Australia are of very in, much interest to the investment community at the moment. Next slide. So we've got a fantastic uranium asset, but it's in WA. So it is ISL leachable. It is cheap to develop. It is cheap to operate. It is bloody big, world scale. But right now, uh, we're constrained to what we can do about it. Uh, so next slide. Um, ISL ISL is is the way to do these uh, de uh, developments. Uh, if your asset is ISL leachable, um, you'll make money out of it. And, and, and Yanri, our one, yeah, is very similar to the BOSS asset in South Australia, and I'll talk about that a bit later. Next slide. So our uh, next slide, look, we've got a big resource. These slides are all for everyone's benefit that they can review later. Next slide, please. Okay, so we have a POW now approved by DEMERS to drill out that resource further, and we intend on expanding the resource. Look, six months ago, the market probably didn't want us to do that because of the uranium policy in WA, but now we're getting feedback the market is interested to increase that resource because of the interest from the uranium spot market, but secondly, because of what's happening in WA and Australia with respect to uranium nuclear, and uh, you know, a change in policy might be a bit sooner than people think. Um, and we'll talk about that next slide. So, right, Australia is half pregnant right now in nuclear. We have decided to buy a fleet of small modular reactors in the form of nuclear submarines. We've then decided to home port half of them in Western Australia. And the Western Australian government is super happy about having uh, three nuclear reactors sitting off the coast of Perth, yet their current policy won't let you mine uranium in, in the state, which is just ridiculous and hypocritical. It's going to change, and, and this half pregnant uh, situation won't last. So for uranium mining, uh, that, that is a state-based issue. And I'm actually going to call out a comment I just saw on hot copper around, I made a comment here about sports bet odds. It's really interesting to see when Mr. McGowan was in power, the change in government sports bet odds were 14 to 1. The day he left power, it went to 9 to 1. Um, and then after the ri ridiculous kind of heritage laws debacle in WA, it's reduced further. It's now at about four to one. So it's coming from 14 to one to four to one. And it's, it's continuing to move. In fact, there were polls released in the West that said if, a, if a, an election was held two weeks ago, the Liberals would have won. Um, the second thing to note is the Liberals in WA are pro-uranium mining. Um, they've I've had that straight from the horse's mouth. The day that it, they are back in power, um, that policy changes. Question is, will it be an election issue? Um, and I can I can just highlight, we're going to release some polling. Um, it has been released to us next week, which shows from the WA public's perspective how unpopular uh, this, this policy is. And there's two things there. Obviously, most Liberal voters um, are against the policy, but the, but the polling shows that 50% of Labor voters don't agree with the policy. And actually, 33% of Greens voters don't agree with the policy either. So with that, with that level of, of, um, of, of I, guess, I guess, a lack of support for that policy, I could expect that it may well become an election issue. Um, federally, civilian nuclear generation is an election issue. Mr Dutton has made it that way. There is a lot of criticism and concern around the Labor renewables-led uh, policy, what it'll mean for power prices and, and grid stability. Um, and we'll see how that develops and then feeds into... Uh, uranium mining but you can see it in the media you can see it in the level of discussion and you can see it in the level of investor interest in uranium stocks in australia uh, it's really hot right now next next slide okay so what are we doing we're getting our em results soon um and we're going to drill at melrose um and we, we, we are chasing nickel we're chasing nickel like a jeweler mass style deposit we're very excited about that um at yanry we have a drill program approved uh, we will drill that in due course. Um, and secondly, we're doing a field program there to check for some other commodities like rare earths that we think uh, the tenements, especially down in the south, uh, could be um, could be attractive for. Uh, we've also sold Blackwood. We're looking at selling our sand assets and we're looking for some new projects. I've got one more slide, Manny. Next slide. Okay, and here's the peer comparison. We are cheap. We are 20, assuming no value for any other projects, we're less than 20 cents a pound for you. Compared to BOSS, over the other side, which is about 18 bucks a pound. Now, the reason that's similar is, look, actually, both projects are paleo channel. Both are about 100 metres deep 
both are ISL leachable, um, both are similar size. They're in a jurisdiction that they can uh, develop their asset. In fact, they've done that and spent 100 million bucks. We can't. But it does demonstrate where we can get to in the next few years as that policy changes. There's a huge amount of up, uplift in that price um, simply on uranium. And then we've got the exciting uh, nickel uh, prospects to go. So really exciting future. You can see a re-rate coming uh, for Cauldron. And you can actually see a huge amount of volume coming through. And it's just great to get the liquidity in the stock. I think that's it. But the final thing is my personal email address is on this next slide. And actually on every... Um, on every single announcement is my personal mobile number. Anyone can call me, anyone can email me. Um, look, the company had a bit of a bad history of prior shareholder engagement and it was kind of terrible. So I'm trying to be the most open um, and responsive and transparent CEO for a junior stock out there. Give me a buzz, send me an email, let's talk. Happy to talk through anything um, without wall crossing you. Okay, thanks Manny. Okay, thanks, Jonathan. Uh, there are a few questions coming through for you. Yeah, uh, go for it. I'll I'll, uh, I'll give you the first one, which has come through on a couple of on a couple of questions. Essentially, the question is: Are you a little bit disappointed that um, that uh, the stock, you know, given what the uranium price has done, um, you haven't re-rated yet? Whereas perhaps you know others have seen good, you know, sort of good movements in share prices. Are you a little bit disappointed and a little bit surprised yeah. it hasn't? Look, we're up 30% yesterday, back down 10% today. Um, I think I've been really getting the, the, the marketing out there and, and, and you know, hitting um, Twitter and LinkedIn, especially after I got my uh, teenage daughter to teach me how to use Twitter, um, really pushing the story around how cheap our U pounds are. And I think I think investors, because of the, the prior history of the company, it, it, it had been five years of not, not great stuff. Um, people are only just starting to rediscover the story. You're seeing that in the volume in the last week. It's been phenomenal. Um, I think there's only upside from here. Okay, great. Um, one uh, Another question that's come through uh, is uh, a question around some timing uh, yep. and timeline. Uh, you've mentioned the EM survey um, at Melrose. When can we expect to see some of those results coming through? Yeah, so... We want to get that, those, the, we've got preliminary data, obviously the final data will come through from Canada actually in the coming days. But then it takes a week to sort of, you know, interpret and get the get the geeks to do the number crunching. So, you know, we've said in the next four weeks, I hope it will be sooner. Um, and then the next step after that is drilling. We will be drilling uh, as soon as the harvest is finished on that land. And, and look, uh, you know, unfortunately for, for the farmers, it's not a great season this year. They've had two very good seasons, but they'll do an early harvest yes, this year. So I expect we'll be uh, we'll be drilling late November, early December. Okay, great. And one final question for you, and this one's around uh, around funding and the balance sheet. Uh, mm. Just a question around you know how comfortable are you uh, on with the current given the current status of the balance sheet, and you know is it you know are you in a position to to basically fund uh, all the plans that you do have. Yeah, so uh, it was one of the nice things about selling the Blackwood Gold asset recently, get a bit of, bit of money in the door. Um, could have sold that, you know, for script or some, you know, more production royalties and stuff. I just wanted cash to, to boost that that position. Um, we've also got a bit more cash coming in the door. We, we let some tenement applications go actually uh, in WA recently and we get about 50 grand back from that. So, you know, all that helps. Um, but, you know, yeah, the, the cash is getting lower. The, the drill campaign at... Uh, at Melrose is not going to be an expensive one because it's not large, it's not deep. Um, it's very simple to get to. So MOB and DMOB is okay. So, you know, the question is, do you, you know, do you fund, do you drill uh, and the current funding envelope or do we do we look to raise? Um, but I think, you know, we've got some options there. The asset that we're looking to sell, still a sand asset, um, would be a more valuable asset than, um, than the gold asset. And so that could well bring uh, bring some funding in the door. Um, but you know, we're we 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 we're, we're doing pretty well. Um, pretty happy where we are. Okay, great. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you, Jonathan.